It is no secret that grocery prices have gone insane and out of control. But today I wanted to share with you a few pantry staples that have helped me. These are things that I pretty much always have on hand for quick meals. They are all very budget friendly, so let's go. But first, if you're new around here, hello, my name is Lydia Sin, and I make videos on frugal and simple living. We are a family of six who paid off all of our consumer debt eight years ago. Our debt-free anniversary is coming up, and that is always exciting for us. But I like to share practical, non-judgmental advice, so that's what you'll find here. I would love it if you would like subscribe and join our community. Inflation obviously has reached record high, 7.5%, the highest in 40 years. Here's the thing that nobody seems to want to address. Generally, once a company has raised their prices, we don't see those prices go back down again. Now, there are certain caveats to that, and that is things that are really driven by agriculture. So the, the cost section of the grocery store, the outside ring of the grocery store, so things like produce, milk, meat, dairy, milk is dairy, but you get what I'm saying, those prices do go up and down. And so you will see the price of eggs and the price of milk and the price of meat come back down. However, the rest of the store, that box of cereal, that can of vegetables, those sorts of things, the toilet paper, those don't generally come back down in price once the price has gone up. And I'm going to leave a link below to a blog post I wrote about 20 plus recipes for when your pantry is a little bare, when you got no money to spend on groceries, and I hope that helps. I hope that helps. Ugh, this video is depressing. So let's talk about some pantry, fridge, and freezer items that really give you a lot of bang for your buck, particularly as prices fluctuate. And these are all items that are extremely versatile. You can make a lot of meals out of them. Frozen vegetables. <laughs> some of these bags are open because I used them a minute ago. But I got peas, chopped spinach, and sweet potatoes. I will do sweet potatoes. I'll cut up an apple and some sausage and whip up a quick hash. The chopped spinach is great to add some nutrition to recipes. I also put it in smoothies. The peas are just great for sides, but also I put them in soup, chicken soup that I make and other things. And frozen vegetables are a great staple because they are cost effective. They're inexpensive, are picked at the peak of the season, flash frozen, and are very nutritious. And frozen vegetables are already prepped. These sweet potatoes are already peeled and frozen. The peas are already ready to be cooked. Everything is already done for you, saving you a ton of time and money. So one of our staples is tortillas. They are relatively inexpensive. And there's so many things that you can do with them. Obviously, you could put a little cheese and chicken in them and make a quesadilla. You could put some vegetables and cheese in them and make a vegetable quesadilla. Sometimes we do peanut butter and a banana. There's just a lot of things that you can do with a tortilla. They're delicious and they are relatively inexpensive. Eggs. Eggs are a good hearty protein. They are versatile. You can do a lot of things with them, like scramble them up and stick them in those tortillas I just showed you. There's so many things that you can do with an egg. Now, full disclosure, these are eggs from my chickens, and so therefore they're dirty because I do not wash them before we put them in the fridge. But our eggs actually cost more than the average egg price right now. The average egg price is $1.79, but because we raise our own girls, um, they're a little bit pricier. However, still a wonderful addition to any grocery cart. One of the personal staples in our house, because we are Southern, are grits. I like the Jim Dandy grits. It's what I was raised on. They are ready in five minutes, but you can do grits and a little bit of cheese and you have a meal. You can do it as a side. You can get fancy and add extra ingredients, but grits are a great quick breakfast and a great quick dinner. Oatmeal, both the quick rolled or steel cut variety, any sort of oatmeal. These are just the quick oatmeal oats. 
you can obviously make oatmeal. You can make baked oatmeal, which if you're not a traditional oatmeal fan, baked oatmeal is very hearty and tastes like a cookie. You can grind it up and use it as flour. You can use it to bulk up pancakes and muffins. You can do blender muffins with it, add it with an egg and a banana and make a muffin. So many things. Lentils. I feel like lentils are the unsung hero because they have a lot of protein, magnesium, fiber. They're delicious, even if you're not a bean lover. So my husband does not like beans, but he likes lentils. He's not a huge fan of meatless recipes, which I could go the rest of my life without eating meat and be fine, but I can get him to eat lentil tacos, lentil chili, and he hardly notices that the meat is not there. And with rising meat prices, it's good to start looking at alternatives, but these are a great source, like I said, of potassium because he's low in potassium um, because he has lupus. That's a different story for a different day, but just lots of good hearty things that you can make with it. You can grab those tortillas that I talked about, add some taco seasoning, cook these in your slow cooker or your instant pot or just a pot on your stove and put them in your tortillas and they're delicious. You can also put them in muffins and you hardly know they're there. So good. Peanut butter, creamy peanut butter, chunky, whatever, great staple. Whenever we donate to the food pantry, they always request peanut butter because families want it. Um, It is a good source of protein. Children love it. Really any sort of nut butter, um, but peanut butter is our favorite. Okay, grab you a big bag of flour because I'm telling you a little bit of flour, butter, salt, and a tablespoon of sugar, and you can make so many things, biscuits, pancakes, pizza crust. Well, you'll need a little yeast for that. Um, Pie crust. There's so many things that you can make out of just flour and then a fat, a salt, and an acid. I'm going to tell you, I was not comfortable cooking before 2012. I hardly ever cooked, and then I discovered that, hey, I might not enjoy it that much, but I'm pretty decent at it. And if you can just get comfortable cooking from scratch, you can save a lot of money, and it does not take that much time. Okay, one of our favorite staples is quinoa, and while it is not cheap, so it stretches so far. So you can do one cup of quinoa to two cups of water, and it's really fluffy, packed with protein, packed with flavor add a little butter, add a little pink sea salt, you're good to go. Bananas are a cheap filling snack and fruit. They come in their own container. You can throw them in a backpack. You can throw them in a blender. There are so many things you can do with a banana. Also, don't forget that spices and seasoning are a very cost-effective way to make bland pantry staple food taste better. Okay, so I had someone leave a comment on one of my sheet pan videos saying, why do you over-season your food? And I wanted to say, okay, dry chicken breast, we know how you cook. But onion powder, paprika, garlic powder, taco seasoning, everything but the bagel seasoning. Grab yourself some seasonings and dress up your meals. I would love to know what are some of your pantry staples? What are your go-to items that you keep on hand to create simple and creative meals? Leave me a comment below. Thank you for being here and I will see you soon.